Hey guys, Dylan from Real Destinations here. Yesterday we went out and targeted a big snapper off Lullabar. After a bit of rain, they always seem to be there. But today, I'm gonna get the guy out of the Yeti and show you how I like to fillet big fish. First of all, let's talk about the knife. Bubble blade, my favorite. Not a super flexible knife though. These big fish have super big bones and backbones. I like a bit of stiffness to feel where they are. Let's have a look at this guy. We only kept one yesterday. In Queensland, you're only allowed, you're only allowed one over 80 centimetres. So we're on a big fish spot. We got the one, we came home. All about sustainability. These guys are super old fish. You don't want to go killing too many. Um, this guy's been in the Yeti overnight. It's super cold. The best way to fill up these fish is to have them on ice or refrigerated overnight. It firms the flesh right up so you get the best fillet. Okay, this is how I do it anyway. First incision with the scales right up high along here. Come around his wings. I just like to pull a little bit back through his belly there. Now what I do, I don't fill it one side then the other. I like to use the, oh, the big fillet to hold the fish's backbone level the whole time. So same incision through here, right up to the top of his head. Down through his belly. Now this is where, this is, well I suppose the way I like to do it. Follow his backbone, just see, I've only got the knife in about two centimeters. All I'm trying to do is break the scales and the skin. I'm not trying to actually do any cuts yet. Get down to the end, feel his backbone. Pop him the whole way out of his tail like that. One thing with big fish, knives don't like to go through them. Now that I've done that mini incision, now's when I find the backbone. I cut back, I, I cut towards myself. Yeah, I know, not the best thing to do, but I find it's the easiest way to get right along his backbone. A quick look deep in there. You can see we've, we've got a nice cut and there's no flesh left on the bone. What I was saying before, I do like to keep that fillet on there because as you can see, when I flip him back over to this side, his backbone's perfectly flat again. You can imagine if I took that fillet the whole way off, he sits like this and it's much harder to fill it. Same thing, same incision right on his knob. Come down, I've only got about two centimeters of the blade in his back. All I'm doing is slicing skin and scales till I get to here. Pop him out. Unlike the other side, I cut this way, it's back towards your body again. Not the right method, but I find how I can feel the bones the best. Now I've pulled that the whole way back through to his backbone. Now you can imagine a big fish has a backbone probably thicker than my thumb. So I want to get to that and then you've got to fold this up and you kind of want to go up and over that backbone the whole time. So, here that backbone. Go once more to make sure I've got down to the pin bones along here. Again, I flip it over and do the opposite side so I've got the same feeling of the knife. You're not having to redo the knife. My knife skills aren't amazing. So I like to be able to feel the same thing each time. All the way back up to the pin bones. Okay. Now, what I like to do, come down to the sinewy part of the tail. Gonna lose a little bit of flesh, but I find where that cut's gotta be pop him out. Same as the other side, because they're big fish, I follow the bone structure. Follow the bone structure around. And then same as this side, follow the bones, I cut back towards myself till I find that backbone. There he is right there. Pop him over. Same situation, through the sinewy part of the tail, find that cut line, turn him around. Find that backbone cut again. Now that I've done both cuts, basically all I have is the pin bones, the ribs, and this part of the backbone holding the fish. So it's just a matter. You can 
can see we've got quite a nice cut there. There's not much down in the sinewy part that I was talking about before. That's why we aim for that. So you're going to lose a part of that, but obviously the best part of the fish is up here. Get this fish like this. As before, flip it back over. Exactly the same method. Just try and get through that backbone as neatly as we can without losing much fish. Now with big fish, what I used to do is to change knives and try and hack through these ribs as hard as I could. We've got eight or nine pin bones that link the, this part of the fish to the ribs and then we've got the big ribs. So what I'm gonna actually do, I'll cut through the pin bones but come over the ribs. Best way I like to do that is find that first pin bone and get through it. Another little tip when you're feeling a big fish, this is your safety. You see me put a lot of pressure back towards myself. If I do slip, it's only gonna go into the fish's head, not into my hand. I'd never do that holding the meat of the fish. So I'm coming through them pin bones now, over the top of the ribs. That's where that bit of flex helps. I can actually come up over it and feel where that pin bone and the rib is. down there it is that's our first fill it off bit of hacking not too bad not much fish left on that fillet on that frame at all so same situation here come through that first pin bone make sure I snap him off and then basically follow that rib cage as best I can Hello. Bit of hacking there. There we have it. Two beautiful local Sunshine Coast snapper fillets. And not much meat left on there at all. You can see the rib cage intact. I like to on a fish this size, there is so much meat left in these frames. So I cut quickly, I cut them out, and what I do is I twice fry them, lightly battered. Oh, one of the best and tastiest parts of the fish. Way I go about it, straight in, you want to cut around his gill cage and then through. So the way the wing is actually held onto the fish, and I used to get another knife and hack at this all the time. Super simple way, I'll flip him over and show you again. Right there, you can feel there's a cartilage which holds the wings onto the head. Once you find it, it's just a simple cut and the wings are away. Now just cut his guts away. His gills are a little bit attached in there still. There we have it. One of the tastiest parts of any fish. Red Emperor to die for. Snapper this size as well. All you have to do now is scale him. Bit of flour, salt and pepper. Bang him in the deep fryer, let him cool down, get the deep fryer flying or a wok, whatever, put it back in. This goes like KFC, it tastes like chicken, it's amazing. And we don't like to waste any part of these fish. They're so old, so tasty, that's why we like to catch them. Great, amazing fight. We've got the wings off, we've obviously got the fillets off. Now there's a scallop in here that I like to shallow fry in butter and it tastes, you have no idea, it's so nice. this pop the skin off him when I get home and it is so tasty big plate on the snap all fish have it too the red emperor and that have it there's a big plate there try and get through that really tough piece of skin so I can get all that flesh from underneath There it 
is two of the tastiest little medallions you'll get. This guy, he's now ready for the crab pot. Stick him in there. Let's get this a bit cleaned up. I'll rip the skin off these guys and go home and eat him up. Skinning, no different to every fish. Grab the sinewy bit, don't mind wasting a bit of that so you can grab your fingers onto it. Slide angle down. Big fish are a bit easier because you have that really thick skin and scale. Okay, I can feel this is starting to warm up now, so I want to hurry up a little bit. This hot Queensland summer. I don't want to wreck the fish. Get him back on ice as quick as we can. So slight pressure down. There we have it. One beautiful fillet. I like to keep him on there. I don't like to get the slime of the fish onto the actual fillet. Don't like to wash my fish at home either. Slight pressure down. I do saw a little bit at the start just to get my angle, but then it's all slime slicing after that. Beautiful fillets, two nice medallions, another meal there. This guy's going to keep us fed for a long time. Super excited, so stoked I could share this with you guys. We're going to go load the crab pots up, head home, and cook this guy up.